Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. This is a follow-up on the last video of the new battery revolution. In that video, you'd recall that there's plenty of battery research going on at various stages of implementation and that new uses for batteries were coming online. It's highly recommended that you watch that video first. In this video, we'll take a look at the worst case scenario for our environment. That is, we stick to lithium iron over the next few decades rather than liquid, aluminium or anything else mentioned in the last video. If this worst case scenario happens, what's in store for battery recycling? You are watching Cold Fusion TV. For this video, I teamed up with the Faraday Institution, particularly Rob Somerville, who helped me answer some questions. We'll hear from him a little bit later. It's clear that a battery revolution is coming, but how long do we have until we have to start worrying about environmental factors from when a new wave of electric cars and battery systems start expiring? Rob told me that there are already some issues in the battery recycling of electric cars involved in accidents, but in terms of a global environmental issue, Tesla batteries degrade about 9% after traveling 270,000 kilometers or 168,000 miles. A Model X has been clocked at over 600,000 kilometers, so in truth, no one really knows how long these cars will last, but some estimates put it at about 17 years. Like I mentioned in the previous video, there are secondhand uses after electric cars. These involve things like household power, commercial infrastructure, and gradually less demanding uses until the batteries can only power something like a TV remote reliably. But beyond that, it's reached the end of its life and it's time for recycling. So let's be conservative and say that we have about 20 years all up. So the problem. The waste materials of batteries can be toxic. We have metal oxides, phosphates, as well as aluminium, copper, graphite, and organic electrolytes but there's also harmful lithium salts and various plastics. If we don't take care of recycling these components, there could be major environmental consequences. Today, the problem is that 95% of lithium ion batteries are either stockpiled or end up in landfill, which can cause explosions or prolonged environmental damage. As a lot of people are aware with the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, lithium ion batteries can be a bit dangerous. So um, this is called thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is when a lithium ion cell self-heats and it leads to the cell getting damaged. This can cause degassing, which is when hot gases are released from the cell. It can lead to fire when these gases catch fire, or it can lead to explosion. If these gases can't get out, they build up and they, the cell just explodes. Uh, crushing or piercing the cell will create an internal short circuit, which will create a rapid, uncontrolled discharge, which will cause it to heat up, which will cause thermal runaway. So this is one of the great challenges in lithium ion battery recycling. You need to do it safely because setting fire to all the things you're trying to recycle is not a very efficient way of recycling. The main culprit is phones and laptops. Right now, when we throw them in the garbage, it's way too expensive to sort them from the rest of the trash. There needs to be education on this issue. And it's starting, for example, the Victorian government in Australia is launching an awareness campaign to educate people on the dangers. The good news is that with electric cars and utility storage, this is much less of an issue. The recycler knows that they're dealing solely with batteries and can recycle accordingly. But there still remains a problem of battery labeling. For a lot of lithium ion batteries, they don't, the packaging does not describe what is inside the cell. This makes it significantly harder for people looking at recycling, but specifying roughly what's in there. For example, how badly it could go wrong if we put it through a shredder so that we can take the necessary safety precautions when we're attempting to recycle them. So having that sort of information available to recyclers would be very important. Now with all of that in mind, let's take a quick look at the latest research most of this is centered around my talk with Rob and a September 2018 study. Here's a flowchart of how a typical lithium ion recycling process goes. Currently in research, general improvements have been made both in the pre-treatment and hydrometallurgical processes. That's the black and red dotted boxes. Hydrometallurgy, it's uh, one of the newer processes that is being looked at more. Cells are broken open in a shredder or a crusher. You then separate the components. You can separate the volatile electrolyte, you can separate plastics, and then the important part, which is the black mass, which is the electrode coating. Um, you can then dissolve the black mass in acid and then separate out the different metals using solvent extraction to get pure salts of different metals that were in the cells. In the late 2018 study, 
Ultrasonic washing, that is, using low frequency sounds to agitate fluids, have been proven to use less energy than crushing or heating separate parts. In the study, there have been many chemical component separation methods that yield recovery above 90% of important raw materials, but one such process stood out to me. It was an environmentally friendly bio-leaching process that recovered 100% copper, 100% lithium, and 75% of the aluminium. This method used hydrochloric acids as well as surprising acids such as citric acid found in fruits. Surprisingly, even certain types of fungi found in decaying vegetation and soil can yield bacteria that remove and separate cobalt from lithium. There is a subset of hydrometallurgy called biohydrometallurgy, which is where bacteria are used to do a lot of the legwork. Where the bacteria produce nanoparticles which are suitable for reuse in a cell. The bacteria poop the metals and it's really cool. Um, really, really fine particles of mixed metal oxide, which is what we're looking for in cells. On the plus side, it's got really low running costs because you just, just leave the bacteria to it and they do their thing. And it can work on impure feeds. However, the disadvantage is that it's really quite slow. So when the raw materials are recovered, what do we do with them? Some elements can be used in concrete, magnets, and even new batteries. The study concludes that we should aim to have recycling with low energy consumption, but also recovers all important elements, but with zero environmental pollution. There's research that exists that achieves this, but they're only in the beginning stages. The study also concludes that there needs to be a standardized recycling process. Batteries that are designed with recycling in mind are essential. Rob agrees. Also designing cells for disassembly. Currently, it is a nightmare trying to take them apart. I just took one apart in a glove box day before yesterday and um, it's tweezers and it's really, really fiddly trying to take it apart because that is not currently the sort of thing that anyone has really cared about so far. They're just designed to get the energy density and cell life. That's all they really care about. Making it light, making it small. That's, that's really the, been the only target so far. If you can make, also make it easy to recycle, that would really improve things. The ultimate goal is to have the same statistics as the recycling process of lead acid batteries. Currently, 99% of all lead acid batteries are recycled. This is because lead acid batteries are a much older technology that stretches back to 1859. But lithium ion, on the other hand, has only been in widespread use since the early 1990s. Companies like Lifecycle are close to total recovery and can produce chemicals good enough for a satisfactory performance in a second generation recycled battery. The system is a closed loop and their goal is to process up to 250,000 tonnes of lithium ion batteries per year. Envirostream, an Australian company, has recycled 240,000 kilograms of batteries in 2018. So what about Tesla? What are they doing? Well, Tesla freezes their Panasonic batteries with liquid nitrogen to prevent further chemical reactions. From there, they're shredded and crushed into tiny pieces, separating the valuable components. The long-term goal for Tesla is to reuse recycled materials from used batteries at the Gigafactory itself, cutting the need for mining and shipping new components. They're also trying to make it easier to replace battery packs, a point which Rob pointed out is critical for the future. Currently, when you recycle a car, you take out things like the engine oil, brake fluid, unused petrol, that is currently required by law. What I would like to happen is for it to be required by law for batteries to be easily enough accessible that this can be done at the same time as taking out these fluids uh, rather than digging through from the top, just being able to drop it out of the bottom or something like that. A company called Yumicore has a fully closed loop recycling system where they can save at least 70% of CO2 emissions from the recycling process. The byproducts, such as refined metals like cobalt and nickel, can be used to harden tools or used in grease like WD-40 and even resold to battery manufacturers. To highlight this, Yumicore is one of the largest suppliers of lithium cobalt oxide to the battery manufacturers. Yumicore demonstrates that recycling can be economically viable. Tesla has worked with Yumicore and found a way to recycle battery packs profitably without unsustainable government initiatives. It should be noted that due to only a handful of cars coming back at this early stage in electric vehicle life cycles, Tesla hasn't had the ability to reuse and recycle the parts at high volume. So governments around the world are looking at different things to incentivise recycling. Australia, for example, has put a ban on sending batteries to waste and landfill. The law takes effect on the 1st of July 2019. In January 2019, 
the United States government established the Battery Recycling R&D Center, as well as prizes totaling $5.5 million for entrepreneurs to find innovative solutions to collecting, storing, and transporting discarded lithium-ion batteries for eventual recycling. Rob also mentioned some work going on in Switzerland. In countries such as Switzerland, they have a tax on the sale of batteries, which then goes to the battery recyclers. This means that you can recycle batteries at any shop in the country, and they will be collected and sent to central facilities separated for recycling. So what about lithium mining? As it turns out, all mining is bad for the environment. But as far as mining goes, lithium isn't that harmful if done responsibly. It's more sustainable than coal, which is 100% consumed and non-renewable. Lithium can be, and is often produced by extracting natural lithium salt out of the ground and letting excess water evaporate. The environmental impact done with this method is minimal if done correctly. This doesn't mean that there aren't risks. If the process is negligent, then damage may be done to the water supply of surrounding areas. Although it's in its early days, companies are already efficiently recycling used batteries and new research is showing that it's possible to achieve this biologically with almost a zero carbon footprint. The Faraday Institution are also working hard on solutions. I'll let Rob detail what they're working on at the moment. The Faraday Institution has various different projects. Uh, there are four fast start projects. These include the battery recycling project, which is what we're looking at, battery degradation, uh, which is modeling how batteries degrade over time and over use, uh, multi-scale modeling project, which is attempting to predict battery performance, and then a project on next generation solid state batteries. These are the four projects that the Faraday Institution has at the moment. The battery recycling project, which is the one that I'm involved in, is split between seven universities, the University of Birmingham, Newcastle, Leicester, Edinburgh, Oxford Brooks, and Cardiff and Liverpool. The University of Newcastle is looking at assessing the state of health of lithium ion cells and modules within the pack and determining basically how healthy they are. Can they be put back into, uh, into a battery pack and reused in a car or should they go on to uh, second life applications and if so, which second life application should that be? Around all of this, there is the business and regulation aspect, which is looking at the life cycle assessment the environmental impact, the economics, and the legal and policy impacts of this sort of thing. But with all of that being said, we still have quite a few years to get this perfect. It'll be a while since the battery boom leads to a massive glut of batteries that need to be recycled. And this is also the worst case scenario. If graphene, silicon, liquid, and aluminium based batteries don't take off within that time period, in conclusion, there is still plenty of work to do and future battery manufacturers have to design with recycling in mind. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, this has been Dagogo, you've been watching Cold Fusion. If you've just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers guys, have a good one. Cold Fusion, it's new thinking.